<laughs> that guy came from Northwest Street Fighter. I can tell. All right. So, anyways, uh, so now that we uh, have covered what poking is, get into how to effectively poke. Mm -hmm. How do you effectively poke? That is a great question. <laughs> Because uh, oftentimes people don't know how to, uh, the best way of going around about poking. Yeah, so. new, yeah, new players generally learn their combos, so they know their launchers, and then they just kind of do their launchers a lot. And uh, filling in your game with pokes will make your launchers more effective and more likely to hit if used correctly. And they're just, you know, launchers are unsafer in general, so. You can, if you can poke effectively, you can take down your opponent more safely and with a wider variety of strategies. So, anyways, um, one of the things that uh, people will tell you to uh, uh, when you're poking is to hit them where they're not blocking. Yes. You know, which is a very unhelpful. Uh, <laughs> it's, advice. It seems unhelpful, but it's the best piece of advice I've ever got. But you, you have to think about it for a minute. You know, think about when your opponent is not blocking. And then and then hit them when they're doing that. Right, but uh, oftentimes it's useful to have a bit uh, uh, a bit better uh, better a bit more direction. Yeah, them. a bit more specific. Yeah, uh, so you can get some understanding. So uh, in order to be able to poke effectively, though, first off, you're going to have to know what your pokes are. A lot of characters have all sorts of different pokes. Yeah. Uh, like you know, Nina's got a whole plethora of pokes. Um, that Maybe. cover all sorts of things from from like mid range stuff to highs, lows, um, counter hit launchers, things like that. And uh, Dragon Off also has a lot of cool posts. Tons of posts. That's good. And Nina's got a fast mid homing move. You know, that's considered a poke. Um, but yeah, so you have to know what your pokes are first off. And then secondly, uh, you need to know what kind of ranges you're at. Uh, like Greg, uh, Alex was saying, Dragonoff's got his down forward to four, which is great for a keep out because it's got long range. Down forward four. Down, this is, oh, down forward four? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which has like really long range. Okay, yeah, look at the range on this. Uh, but it doesn't have much track. I mean, you guys got a similar down forward four, that wasn't it. Uh, it's not quite as much range. It's not, uh, and Nina's got pretty long legs too, so I mean, I mean Dragon Ops, they're, you know, exceptionally long. Right. Um, but you know, down 2 has better range. Yeah, because she, you know, moves into it. And, uh, now, and you know, down 2 also has some other nice properties like an eye crush mm -hmm. early on, so it's great to use against machines that like the electric and the Bastards. <laughs> Yeah, like a move like, you know, Nina, you want to be very close range. A lot of her moves are very close range. So a poke like down two helps you close the range against your opponent and is you're pretty safe from being kept out with jabs or a move like this, highs and maybe probably even some mids, but uh, so she can get in there. So that's another, you know, useful uh, thing for pokes. So some of them help you close the distance and some of them help, like you see Dragon Miles down 4-4 actually pushes her back. So this move, you know, I, I want to use this move to keep her out, and she wants to use down two to get in. Uh, and there's a bunch of different moves you can use for all yeah. of those purposes. Uh, just, you have to know what when to use them for what situation. That's going to just be a lot of experience, uh, experience trying things out, seeing mm -hmm. what works. Um, yeah, so, you know, after you know what your ranges are, and also your other properties, they put out the high crush, low crush, um, counter hit, counter yeah. launch. Have evasion property. Some some characters have evasive pokes. They're really good. Yeah. That's not a poke. It's not really a poke. Yeah. This like down two here. It crushes eyes almost immediately. That's just like pestering with one two. Just gets underneath them. Um, but yeah. So after you know your ranges, um, you need to start figuring out how to how to condition your opponent to um, to block certain ways. Um, so, you know, you can use your mid pokes to make sure that they keep blocking uh, mid. And, you know, because they don't want to, they don't want to take the damage. Duck and get wrecked, yeah. Right. Uh, so, um, you can use your low pokes um, then to uh, get them to want to duck 
especially a low with good tracking like that before. And you can't, you can't, you have to block that. You basically can't. Can't step yeah, in. Can't. Yeah. Um, they can use your little poke once they're blocking mid to get a little bit of damage, and then you get them. They're gonna have to start guessing one way or the other. Yeah. Um, if you ever get a good read on your opponent, then you can start using bigger moves to uh, get some bigger damage. Yeah. Um, so uh, one one thing that's uh, uh, what's kind of useful in pokes uh, is if you purposefully set up a pattern that your opponent can, uh, can learn. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I'm doing this with the. Uh, doing one, two, side step, one, two, side so, step. Yeah, an experienced player would notice that it's mid, high, high, mid, high, high. But then she can just hit me with a big fat, a four, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, So, I'm uh, Seiko, I'm Silence. This is Monstroso. Uh, I'm the Nina player. He's actually a Mishima player, but yeah, he's- I'm using Dragon off today for the poking tutorial. <laughs> yeah, since, uh, Shimas are known for their really good <laughs> pokes. Pokey, except for that one. Not that Oh, no, I was talking about it. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, yeah, so if you uh, set up your opponent once uh, with a pattern and get them comfortable with it, mm -hmm. um, then you can just switch it up on them uh, once they either start figuring it out and trying to uh, uh, trying to counter yeah. your pattern or... Uh, a very good pattern to start with is do two lows, then a mid. And you'd be shocked how even very experienced players, you know, it takes two to learn. So people will you do two rows, right? And then just a big fat mid. And you'd be shocked how often that works. But that's an that's an example, a very basic example of, you know, creating a pattern for your opponent to identify and then changing it. Right. Um, and then another thing that's uh, useful is um, uh, people, uh, more experienced players will start learning the uh, timing of your patterns. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like if I was doing this again, you know, and, you know, it's the same timing every time. I can... Yeah, I might stand up. I might say, oh, she stopped, better stand up, because I don't like ducking. Yeah. And she can continue to pattern. Right. For that, that particular pattern is not terribly useful, but on something like down four, one, down four, you know, someone get if you do this to someone a bunch of times and then you uh delay it i mean you, they might stand up in time to get hit um and you know oftentimes you can use uh use a crouch to kind of like fake that you're going low and uh, then people have a lot harder time getting breathed on you when you change every time um and then the, Another thing to do that's really important to know um, on how to be effective poker. Effective poker. How to be a good poke monster. A <laughs> poke monster. Is uh, you need to know when to stop poking. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, if you're just like being Nina and just running all over the place, doing all this stuff, eventually um, your opponent's going to be able to get a counter and launch on you or a ball standing launch. Yeah, or avoid your move. Yeah, the something they're gonna try something and it'll work eventually if you're predictable enough or right. persistent enough. Too persistent. And since pokes tend not to do a lot of damage on their own, you know, like you could hit someone with ten pokes and then lose all that ground you made off of one one get hit by one launcher. <laughs> it's definitely happened to this guy before. <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> yeah, so you need to know when to stop poking, um, and that one is just one you're gonna have to get a good read on your opponent. Mm -hmm. um, although, oftentimes, like, if you're getting blocked a lot, it might be a good idea to at least change up your timing on your token or maybe back off and Because generally when someone is blocking mids, if someone blocks a mid, uh, they're plus, generally speaking, not always. Yeah, some mids are uh, plus on, on the block, like this, I can keep, you know, going and after attacking with that move. But this is a big slow move. This is the type of move that a poke would interrupt. Right. So yeah, the uh, the mids that are plus on block tend to be slow. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, so if you're doing throwing a lot of mids and getting blocked, you're likely to get uh, get counter hit um, in the counter response from the opponent. 
Yeah. But, but like, if you can read that response and react to it correctly, you can get yeah. big damage. So if I just do this... Uh, of course! <laughs> This will take you too long. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Just hold on. So, there you go. Yeah, so, yeah, I could do something like that. But yeah. Um, that's, that's important to uh, to know when to stop your folks. Uh, is there uh, anything else that you can think of on how to effectively poke? No, I mean, um, if you're looking for uh, tips, you know, just watch a good player play your character and see which moves they do a lot. And, and in what situations. Yeah, and in what situations and, you know, how many times you do. Because you, you can't just, like, down four, down, you know, and mix someone up all day with pokes because they're going to guess right and blow you up, uh, like we said earlier. You got you to gotta use pokes as a tool to set up for bigger things. You can't just exclusively poke someone down all day. It takes a lot of down twos to kill someone, actually. But it does pretty good damage, but it, it only takes like two hop kicks, but it takes like, you know, 15 down twos or something. So you're gonna get, you're gonna lose, that's a losing statistical advantage. Okay. Also, don't forget if you've got any questions. Yeah, we're taking questions. We are taking questions throughout all of it, so. Um, we're gonna move on to the next topic. Oh, wait, hold on a sec. Uh, so what you're saying is that you watch high level Lucky Glory players. <laughs> yes. Are there any? Yeah, Jump the Dean played uh, Lucky Glory for a long time. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there are some decent Lucky Glory players out there. Um, oftentimes, you can get some insight on what they and how they use their moves. Yeah, you know, they might use their moves in a way that you hadn't thought of. Yeah. But Lucky Glory seems to have a lot of strings, and strings are kind of different from pokes. I don't know if they're gonna go over them today, but as you can say, like, this string is kind of is a poke, you know, these two are a poke, and then the mix-up on this one is the third hit, but that's kind of like a tricky, different sort of thing. So Lucky Chloe's got a lot of strings, which uh, are, are kind of a different mindset when using. But I'm sure you can find out some good pokes from Lucky Chloe. Right. So, um... Now that we've talked about how to effectively poke, uh, let's talk so about... My opponent is a poke monster, what do I do? How to defend <laughs> against pokes. Alright. What do? Yeah, what do you do about, <laughs> about pokes? What do you do about pokes? Alright, so, yeah, like we were saying, uh, what we were saying before is that, you know, 